Sometimes characters are secretly evil. It's a good narrative device, let's be frank. But a lot of the time, they're like important characters. Them being evil has a huge impact on the story, like Big Smoke from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. This list is a little bit different. Like, we're not talking about allies, party members, friends, or cast members. We're talking about NPCs who just don't seem to matter until they turn out evil. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 secretly evil NPCs in video games. Starting off with number 10, it's King Seeker Framped from Dark Souls. He's a pretty central NPC in Dark Souls, basically your guide. He tells you most of what you gotta do to become the king's successor and rid yourself of the curse of the undead. You just play the game normally, you probably have no idea this guy has ulterior motives. I am pleased to see you well. Is it something urgent? It's never explicitly stated in the game that this guy maybe doesn't have your best interest at heart or that he's trying to deceive you. So it's up to the player to put together the clues and figure out what's going on for themselves. Now, here's the thing. Almost everything that Fireseeker Framp tells you in Dark Souls is either a half-truth or an outright fabrication. He tells you that your destiny is to take on Lord Gwyn's place, but conveniently leaves out that you're not taking his place as king, you're taking his place as an eternal kindling in the magic fire that that keeps the world of Dark Souls alive. One of the biggest clues to his deception is Anorlando, the Seat of the Gods. When you get there, it seems pretty nice and normal, and it's there that you meet the goddess Guinevere and obtain the Lord Vessel. Everything seems like it's on the up and up, but the Guinevere you see is actually an illusion, as is all of Anorlando. Basically, everything about the prophecy of the Chosen Undead in this game is made up by Frampt and his allies to trick some gullible idiot into setting themselves on fire for all eternity. Now, it's questionable that this is really evil, per se, because it's implied that if the world goes dark, it's going to be extremely bad for lots of people. And uh, that kind of puts everything here in a, in a murky gray area which kind of describes the story of Dark Souls on the whole. At number 9 is Nick John Smith from Psychonauts 2. The main plot of Psychonauts 2 revolves around uncovering a mole within the Psychonauts organization, and there's plenty of red herrings pointing to other characters who have plenty of reasons to have some kind of grudge against the organization. This, being double fine, the actual answer is not so obvious. The real culprit is Nick John Smith, the humble mailroom clerk that you're an intern for at the beginning of the game. He spends pretty much the entire game as a brainless husk who seems like more of a walking punchline than anything else, but the final mission is where it's revealed that he, and try to follow along with me here, folks, he's the last living member of an exiled royal family who wants to resurrect the powerful psychic, Maligula, and conquer his own country. Now, that's a hell of a motive, and this is all told to you in the final mission, which is an It's a Small World ride through Nick's fractured mind, uh, which is expository and, uh, frankly, catchy. Unlike a lot of these out-of-nowhere twists, this game does a lot of work to try to justify it after the fact, at least. Some people probably figured out Nick was the mole before the big reveal, but I really doubt a lot of people came up with that motive. That's a, that's a hell of a motive. At number 8 is Major Phillips from Binary Domain. When it comes to evil NPCs, sometimes they come out of nowhere, make perfect sense, and, well, you can probably tell from my tone, Major Phillips is not that. He's one of the other times. He is your mission control and pretty much no personality in this guy to speak of. He talks like he's the pilot of a 747 telling passengers to expect some like minor turbulence or something. That's how he sounds like literally all of the time. He's barely a character, let alone even an NPC. He's just kind of a voice over the radio giving you mission objectives. Most players forget he even has a name. So when it's revealed that he's actually a bad guy and actually the final boss, most players are like, whoa, uh, what? Major, what the hell is going on here? Regrettably, soldier, this is the end of the line. Hearing this guy's, like, warehouse safety training manual voice give a villain monologue is just silly, and it's the perfectly goofy capstone on an already very goofy game. At number seven is the cab driver from Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. This guy is an NPC in the purest sense of the word. He's just a guy who will take you around from one district to another in a cab, 
Doesn't even have a name. Just cab driver. So, like, he seems like a total non-factor at any and every moment. Oh, but he's more important than he seems. A major part of the end game of Bloodlines is the various factions fighting over this sarcophagus. It's supposed to contain a very ancient vampire, and everybody wants it. I guess because old vampires are like trading cards or something, and they want to collect them all. No, th that's not it. It's 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 for reasons, obviously. Um, depending on the ending you choose, though, it's revealed that the whole sarcophagus affair was just a big joke. Like there was never anything of value in there. It's just stuffed with explosives, and whoever opens it would die. The game basically just ends on a big joke on the player, and the one who's responsible for it was the cab driver who by the way may or may not be Kane the very first vampire it's a pretty crazy twist that really fits in with the nihilistic humor of the game you always hear about how the butler did it but it's rarely the cabbie and number six is Vicky Vale from the Batman Telltale series. If you're a Batman fan, you probably recognize Vicky Vale. She's a Batman love interest in the 89 movie. She was in Arkham City, minor role though. And basically just one of those consistent characters in the Batman universe. Usually just a reporter, no major traits otherwise. That's what makes her big reveal in the first season of the Batman Telltale series so shocking. Um, in that game, Vicky is actually the leader of the Children of Arkham, which is basically the big bad of the first season. Telltale actually did a lot of crazy stuff with Batman's story, uh, up to revealing that Thomas Wayne, Batman's father, who's normally portrayed as basically a saint, was in league with a bunch of gangsters and would institutionalize his enemies at the asylum for his own personal gain. You had your chance. You should have made the deal we offered you. Now, we've seen similar plot lines play out elsewhere, i.e. Joker, but at the end, Vicky Vale reveals herself to be a new villain called Lady Arkham, and she battles Batman in the ruins of the old asylum. It's a crazy twist on an established character. It's like if it was suddenly revealed that, I, I don't know, Harvey Bullock was actually secretly controlling all crime in Gotham or something. It, it, it feels wrong, and not necessarily because Vicky Vale really matters in the Batman universe, but it's so contrary to what seems like established fact. At number five is that big bird in Heavenly Sword. Yeah, it's kind of another one that comes out of nowhere. For pretty much the entire game, the main bad guy is King Bohan, the cartoonishly evil tyrant. One odd quirk of his character is that he's always got this raven beside him, though. It's never commented on. Like, the raven never speaks or even seems to do anything. He's just always there. And during the final battle, it's revealed that the bird is actually some kind of demon that possesses Bohan. Uh, for the final battle, you have to fight a fusion of the two. The only clue you ever get that this bird is the actual bad guy of the game is that the titular Heavenly Swords backstory mentions a raven lord. It's a really small clue, and I don't think anyone really hears that and goes, Oh, well, the bird is, is really the bad guy, you know? I don't, I don't think that happens. Like, this is another one of those out-of-nowhere twists. It's kind of bizarre. Not totally non-telegraphed, but telegraphed in a way where I certainly wasn't thinking about it that way. But it's interesting nonetheless. Like, King Bohan's kind of a clown. He needed some kind of power-up. Otherwise, he really wasn't going to be, like, a proper last boss. At number four is Lucy Stillman from the Assassin's Creed series. Anyone remember this character? She was really only in the first two Assassin's Creed games. And the most memorable thing about her was that she was voiced by Kristen Bell and that she was randomly killed at the end of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. It was like actually a really shocking and memorable twist at the time, but the follow-up was disappointing. Uh, basically, she was a double agent. She broke Desmond out of the Templar facility in the first game so she could find the piece of Eden that the Templars wanted. That's the reason she gets killed in the end because the goddess knows that she's a double agent. What makes this all kind of weird though is that you really only find out the details about Lucy's scheme in the next game, Revelations, and only in background material. For most people playing these games, uh, Lucy just seems like a good guy. Then she gets killed in a cliffhanger ending and uh, that, that's it. She barely gets brought up again and there's almost no repercussions for killing off basically the secondary main character the first three games. Lucy Stillman's reveal is one of the first things people point to to talk about how the Assassin's Creed modern day storyline is a mess. I mean, this stuff happened in the third game of what's now a 12 game series.
And number three is the purple haired girl from Wild Arms 3. As far as RPGs go, Wild Arms 3 is a weird game. Instead of having a single main antagonist, it's split into chapters and each of them have their own bad guys. First, there's Janice, the Prophets, then Siegfried, who seems like the final bad guy, but the true enemy actually reveals itself to be uh, some random purple haired kid. What makes this so weird is that you see this character occasionally. Uh, it sometimes shows up when you first enter a town or like will be standing in the background of an important scene or something. Never really focused on though. And you can easily go through the entire game without even noticing this purple haired kid, um, but always, always seems to be nearby for whatever reason. This being a JRPG, they're not just like a random schemer. The reveal's like a lot crazier than that. So in reality, this girl is the dream demon who's responsible for turning the world into a desert. Apparently, she was actually the one that manipulated everything so that the good guys would take out all the bad guys. We never actually see any of that, but uh, she's a demon, so I guess she can just do anything. So there you go. JRPGs love crazy out of nowhere reveals, but this one really takes the cake. The bad guy of this game is literally just a background NPC. And number two is the two janitors from Hotline Miami. This bizarre and disorienting top-down shooter doesn't put a lot of emphasis on plot, at least at first. The basic plot of the game is you follow various hitmen who get phone calls. The phone calls say, go kill a person, and hey, you get it. The psychedelic vibe makes it seem like there's gonna be some kind of twist revealing this is all in your head or something, like your memories are screwed up or some crap like that. But the actual reveal is really simple. Near the start of the game, you see two random janitors who, like a lot of characters in this game just seem totally random like tons of random characters in this game that just don't matter in any way shape or form not these guys though in the final act of the game part five answers the guy you're playing wants to put a stop to the hitman operation and eventually hunts the phone calls back to the source there he finds that the ones behind the plot are these two janitors and depending on if you can hack their computer it's revealed that they're just doing this for fun or possibly some kind of super nationalist plot maybe they find super nationalist Nationalism fun. I don't know. Uh, basically, like everything else in Hotline Miami, the reveal is kind of disorienting and only makes sense to some extent. It sometimes seems like it's supposed to be literal, but with this game, you don't really know. And at number one, Airy from Bravely Default. Airy the fairy is basically Bravely Default's version of Navi, the annoying fairy from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. She's more of a gameplay tool than an actual character. Like she's there for tutorials, to tell you objectives, and that seems like it. Get far enough into the game though, and the truth comes out. Ares actually the bad guy of the game and is manipulating the party into doing what she wants. It's one of the most shocking twists in any game because she's basically part of the UI. It's like if your quest objectives started lying to you in Skyrim. It's just not something you would really expect. The game does start telegraphing her evilness before it's actually revealed, with the title screen message slowly changing from where the fairy lies to airy lies. Airy is basically if Navi wasn't just annoying, but was like actively a villain who was working against you, which is actually kind of a pretty clever twist in terms of the player's expectations. Place the bad guy where you're never going to look for the bad guy. But, like, interestingly enough, in a character you're going to hate anyways. Like, can you imagine if Navi was actually a villain? You would be like, oh yes, I can kill this thing. Brilliant. Honestly, just brilliant. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course of subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.